welcome to BreezeLine, where you'll say, ta-ta, T-Mobile, our home internet is just plain better, more reliable and faster because we put internet first. If there's network congestion, we won't slow your internet down like T-Mobile does to help their cell customers. And right now, you can try out a true internet experience with BreezeLine's reliable and fast fiber-powered home internet. Find your perfect speed with prices starting at $19.99 a month for 24 months. Terms and conditions apply. Go to BreezeLine.com to learn more. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along. Which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter.com slash post. Real Life Ghost Stories and I have two spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from January the 10th 2023 and story number one comes from Priyanka. My maternal granddad was in the Indian Army and this was right after the independence and he was posted in the Himalayan border of Ladakh where those days the temperature at night could go down to minus 25 to minus 30. They were driving a truck to one of the areas for a rescue mission where there had been a landslide. There were six of them, and they were the first rescuers on call. This was at around 2am and visibility was almost nothing, as there was a drizzle. The area they were going to was about an hour away, and now having driven for almost 1 hour and 45 minutes, and not being able to understand whether they were going wrong or what happened to their navigation tool, they stopped the truck and two of them, the driver and the one who was sitting with him, got off trying to get a better visibility. And after about a minute, they shouted to the others, calling them to come over. They all got down and followed their voices as they couldn't see them with their torches. After walking for a bit, they saw some light and headed towards it. It was a small tea shop, and there was a guy who was making tea and the other two officers were standing there. They all talked and drank tea and were about to leave after getting some directions. The others walked in front while my granddad fell behind, paying the guy. When all of a sudden the guy just held my granddad's hand and said my grandfather's name and told him not to go there in a very strange voice, staring in such a strange way that he creeped my grandfather out and my granddad just jerked his hand away and threw the money and ran up to the other officers. Seeing my granddad a little shaken, one of his friends asked what had happened, and my granddad told them what happened. Surprisingly, no one laughed or made fun of it as he had expected. After driving almost 40 minutes and still no sign of the area, and the navigational tool was going all berserk, they stopped on the side of the road once again, but no one got off this time. They checked the navigation tool and were trying to decide whether or not to turn back or call camp when suddenly there was a knock on the driver's window. And when they all looked, it was a small boy of about 17 or 18 staring at them from outside. The driver stepped his foot on the gas and started the vehicle again while the guy sitting next to him started asking who that was. The driver just told him to shut up and started chanting any prayer that he knew. They were all so confused because they all saw the boy's face at the window very clearly, 
but they didn't understand why they were driving off. Another guy in the truck asked the same question, but nobody got an answer. They drove for about 15 minutes, and then they heard another knock on the passenger window. They all looked towards it and were shocked to see the same boy. The truck was moving. It had not stopped. And then, in a flash, the face was gone, and they all realised what had happened. But within a minute, there was another knock, and then another from the window. Nobody looked anywhere. All of a sudden, the driver stopped the truck. The others saw lights in front of them and slowly saw people coming towards them and they realised they had reached the place that they were supposed to. Later, after the mission, when the six of them got together, the officer driving the truck asked them whether any one of them had reported the incident of the boy's face on their report of that evening. They all said that they did not and nobody could understand whether it was a good spirit or a bad spirit or what it was. There was one more time when he had a similar experience, but in a petrol bunk. So the incident goes that they stopped for fuel, seeing the station, and when they got inside, they understood that it was an abandoned fuel station. And just before they left, they saw a guy in a security uniform sleeping on a small bed outside. And throughout that night, my granddad could see that security guard on the mirrors of the jeep, no matter how far they went. I don't know if this counts as a good spirit story, but the story goes that there was another rescue mission that they had to go to. This time it was during the day, and there were a total of 46 of them in four different trucks. And there was this certain area, which was between two small hillocks, where all the trucks stopped at once. All four of them. And they wouldn't start no matter what, and none of their other devices like their walkie-talkies or anything else worked. After about a half an hour, an old man who was all in white came running from God knows where and gave all 46 of them piping hot Mackay rotis and a kind of spinach that is grown locally in that area. For some reason, not a single person rejected the food nor asked questions. Only one officer had just begun to explain what happened when he had first seen the man running towards them. All he could say was, our truck's when the guy just signals that he understood and urged them to first eat and it will all be fine. After they all had eaten and after they had finished the food, the man just touched the officer on the shoulder and asked him to get going, be quick, they need your help, and just ran off into the woods again. Once he got onto his truck and tried starting it, it started as if nothing had ever happened to it at all. All four trucks started and they continued to where they were going and upon reaching the place, They all start blabbering the stories to everyone they could find and they were told that everyone who passes that area for the first time without knowing anything has the same experience. Oh, that is like some major black eyed kids shit. I mean, what what happened there? Did the guy in the tea shop, did he did he know? Was he like, I'm trying to warn you, like, don't get out of the van when you see this kid but I'm just going to warn you in a freaky way rather than just being like there's a freaky kid out there just you know don't trust him did the driver of the truck like did they have an intuition about this kid because they just stepped on the gas and just went the minute the kid came to the window like that's a lot of that's a lot of weirdness a lot of black eyed kid stuff imagine you're driving along and you're driving physically in motion you're going what 50 miles an hour whatever it is and then a kid knocks on your car window I would be if there was an eject button seat eject button in that car I'd be like I'm out of here and look I'm not gonna lie right if my car stops in the middle of nowhere and some little old man comes out of the forest and offers me some some rotis I'm eating them I'm eating them, all right? I'm not thinking twice either. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm absolutely going to eat them. He sounds like, I don't know, he sounds like a little creature of the forest that is like, yes, I know this happens to everybody. Just have some rotis, have some spinach. You'll be fine. Everything will start up again. Have some magical food. Don't ask questions and then run off into the forest again. I kind of love it. Today's episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. 
So you're trying to find a cause for your symptoms. For me, it was excessive hair loss. And you end up stumbling down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. But there are better ways to get the answers that you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet. ZocDoc helps you to find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialise in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favourite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighbourhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Go to ZocDoc.com slash ghost and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash ghost. ZocDoc.com slash ghost. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter.com slash post. And story number two comes from Colin. So you know how every place has similar ghost stories. There's always a haunted dorm on a college campus, always a haunted auditorium, people being nervous about stock rooms with mannequins, always some road where you can turn off your car, switch it in neutral and watch the car start rolling seemingly uphill. I'm not sure if I really believe stories when I hear the same events repeated over and over again in different locations. But I've ended up experiencing some things that did make me believe them. For the first encounter, I was in high school during a summer program at a university that was famous for being haunted. It's Salem College if you want to look up the stories. Most of the experiences you'll find online happened during my stay there, either to me or to someone I knew. And before you get too excited, no, it's not the Salem in Massachusetts, it's Salem in North Carolina, definitely not the same, but the stories are worth looking up if you like it. For this, I'm only going to share what happened to me. One day, I was supposed to meet a friend to play tennis after classes were out. I was heading up the stairwell in his dorm and I was honestly running, which I shouldn't have been doing. I tripped and started to fall, but someone behind me grabbed my shirt and pulled me back up. I didn't realise there was anyone else in the stairwell with me and turned to thank them, but there wasn't anyone there. I was near an exit to the stairwell though, so I figured that someone caught me but was in a rush to go somewhere, so they just pulled me back up and then went about their merry way. I met up with my friend later and I told them about what had happened to me and started asking around to see who it was because I wanted to say thank you. I don't know how many people I asked before someone just looked at me and said, Wait, did that... Did that really happen? I looked at them, confused. Yeah, I was being clumsy and started to fall, but someone caught me. I just wanted to thank them. They asked me what dorm it was and I told them. They kept looking at me, which, to be honest, was a bit weird, so I broke the awkward silence with a, what? They proceeded to tell me that the building was haunted. In the dorm, there's a blocked-off area that I didn't see, where an elevator used to be. One day, a previous staff member brought their daughter with them to work. The girl unfortunately got too close to the elevator shaft and fell to her death. Story has it that she now watches over the dorm and stops anyone else from falling and suffering the same fate. 
I've never known a little girl to be that strong, but someone really did grab my t-shirt from the back and had enough force to pull me back upright. It immediately both scared me and made me feel incredibly grateful for her being there looking out for everyone. I was using the bathroom one day and someone brilliantly positioned the windows so that if you were standing while using the bathroom, you could look out a window and awkwardly make eye contact with people in the building just across the garden. One day I was in the bathroom and made eye contact with a woman in period dress. The period clothes weren't odd because the city constantly does colonial reenactments and shows some of the history from when the town was founded. I, however, was mortified and so embarrassed that I didn't know what to do. I looked away and then tried to play it off and then turned back to wave, but she was gone. Super embarrassing that someone just saw me in the bathroom and I was irritated at the window placement. But it is an all-girls school, so I guess the view is different if you're standing up versus sitting down. The only time guys are there is during the summer programs for high school students. Fast forward a few weeks to when I shifted classes and had a class in that same building across from the dorm where I saw the woman. I was leaving class one day and walked over to a window. The campus is beautiful, so it was nice just to look around. I could see my dorm and then quickly realised that I could see straight into the bathroom that I'd used on my floor, which meant that this was the window where I saw the woman. What freaked me out though was the realisation that even though I saw the woman basically bust up as if the window started just over waist height, the window ran all the way to the floor. If anyone was looking at me in the window, they would have been able to see my entire body, which means that the person I saw would have had a little over half of their body going through the floor to have been at the right height for what I saw. I don't know if I saw a reflection or an apparition, but either way, it's not uncommon. Often during lessons, there are extra students in classrooms who aren't there when you do a head count again, and reflective surfaces are a massive issue on the campus. I also was walking through the Performing Arts Centre on campus and heard some beautiful organ music, just to later be told that it's incredibly common to hear pianos, organs, footsteps, etc., even if no one is there. So for this one, I used to work in JFK Airport in New York. It's a super busy place and very noisy. And I always wrote everything off as an echo or something easily explainable. The store I worked in didn't have many staff members, so I often ended up working a few hours by myself every day. I didn't mind at all and it was never empty, so I never felt creeped out. We also had fitting rooms because we sold clothes. I can't tell you how many times I thought someone was in the fitting room, despite me not unlocking the door and I just assumed it didn't close properly and someone had walked in. I would hear noises and knock to ask if they needed help with anything. I usually didn't get a response. I didn't want to open the door on anyone, so I would usually just wait. But after waiting for 20 minutes or so for someone to come out of a dressing room and not hearing any more noises, I would knock again. If there was no response, I would unlock the door and open it as slowly as possible, so that if someone was in the fitting room, they had time to speak up before anyone saw them. The fitting room was always empty in these cases, and there usually weren't clothes in there. I wrote it off as echoes in a busy airport. Sometimes I would be by myself and think that I saw someone walk into the back room where employees kept our belongings, where we kept some extra stock, etc. I would walk back there to tell whoever it was that the room was staff only, or if it was another staff member, to welcome in the new company for my shift. A lot of the time, there wasn't anyone there. I also started seeing a man walking past clothing racks from across the store, and it looked so real that I would walk over to greet the person just to find that there was nobody there. I would constantly see a person walking out of the corner of my eye, and I could never make out who it was or what they looked like, but comparing them to the size of the clothing racks, I knew it was a taller man or at least taller than me. I thought it was weird and one day I mentioned it to my co-worker who was very in tune with things and claimed she could see people's auras. She just looked at me and asked, Well, you can see him too. Cue me partially getting excited and partially getting creeped out to work there alone. A few months later, we had a new hire, 
and both the new hire and my co-worker that was more in touch with the spiritual world worked part-time there while I was working full-time and they weren't usually on the schedule together so I don't think they would have spoken much if at all. My co-worker and I decided not to tell her anything because we didn't want to freak her out. Then one day when the new hire and I were both on shift, I saw her walk across the store and say hello to someone, about to go through the regular sales spiel that we all go through, and she just stopped mid-sentence and walked back over to me. I looked at her and she said, I swear sometimes I see somebody walking by that clothing rack, but when I walk over nobody is there. And of course this was the exact same part of the store where I always saw the figure walking. My grandmother had a garden that she loved, and roses were her favourite flower. Unfortunately she passed away when I was younger, but I will always cherish the memories that I have of her. My grandpa and her husband, I think suffered the most. After her death it was like his entire world fell apart. He always seemed strong and put together, and I've never seen two people who loved each other more. He would have done anything in the world for her, and she was just taken away from him. For years afterwards he wouldn't let anyone touch her things, her clothes stayed in the closet, with all the gum and tissues in her coat pockets that she always kept. Her car sat in the driveway for years, he wouldn't sell it or let anyone touch it. He was completely torn apart. I think it was getting worse and worse and one day in the middle of winter he looked out of the window and in my grandmother's garden was a single rose, growing despite being out of season and despite the bitter cold and snow. He told everyone and took solace in it. I think she's looking out for all of us. There have been times when my mother, my grandmother's daughter, felt depressed or frustrated or like she was failing in life and she said sometimes she just feels like her mom is there. Sometimes it's just a warm feeling, sometimes it's like there's a hand on her shoulder, sometimes it's like someone just sits next to her on the bed. I've had plenty of moments too where I've needed some direction in life or I felt like I was having trouble and then I would suddenly have a complete sense of calm or feel like I'm doing the right thing. Sometimes I'm just sitting there with nothing special going on and suddenly I feel like my grandmother has just walked into the room. I don't know how to explain why I think it's her, it's just a feeling. I don't see her, but sometimes there's just a feeling out of nowhere. I really think she's watching after us and might be our guardian angel. After so many incidents in life that could have gone horribly wrong, I really think at least one person, soul, whatever they are, is watching after my family. Oh, I bloody love those stories where somebody's falling or they're falling off something or whatever and then they are caught or grabbed by some sort of guardian angel. The amount of stories that I've heard about kids who have fallen from a height and then they somehow inexplicably float to the ground or they feel somebody catch them. It's pretty amazing to think that you were running up this flight of stairs, staggered, fell and somebody caught you by the back of your jumper and pulled you back again and pulled you to your feet. Like that's that's not something you can misconstrue. You know what I mean? That's not something that you can be like, oh, I saw something out of the corner of my eye, but it might have been whatever a trick of the light whatever it is like somebody grabbing you when you're falling and pulling you back up again and stopping you from falling is oh it's it's just so compelling I love it and as a teenager I don't know if there is anything like more mortifying than somebody seeing you going to the toilet you know what I mean that's like possibly the worst thing that could happen as a teenager if you're a teenage boy and you make eye contact with a grown woman while you're going to the toilet not a vibe But it makes me wonder if the woman that you saw obviously in period dress and the fact that you later realised that if she were to be standing where where you saw her, you know, she'd be up to her waist in the ground. Whether it was like an echo of a time before when the building was different. You know, that's what they say about apparitions and ghosts and whatever that walk through walls or, you know, you only it, it appears and half of their body appears Is it to do with the way the building used to be? I think it's really strange that three workers in this same environment in JFK airport. And I know airports are busy, they're noisy, there's always something going on. We all know that, right? But three workers had the same experience of seeing this man walking past clothing rails out of the corner of their eye. Like, that's really strange. If it was just you, you could kind of go, okay, it's obviously 
a trick of the light or it really is somebody walking and they've just turned somewhere where I can't see them, whatever. But the fact that three separate people saw it and the last girl in particular in front of you went to go and give the sales spiel to that person and then went, oh shit, there's nobody actually here. That's weird. I think airports are weird liminal spaces though in general. And just to say, I love the story about your grandmother. I love the story about the single rose growing in the garden in winter and the fact that your grandfather was able to take comfort from that is so beautiful and of course she's looking out for you all of course she is thank you so much to Priyanka and Colin for sending in your stories and thank you so much for listening if you would like to send in your own story you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com you can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com and if you are desperate for some extra content you can subscribe to our Patreon that is patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories where for five dollars a month or two dollars a month you get access to heaps of extra content as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free and on that note I shall see you next time Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along. Which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash post. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash post. ZipRecruiter.com slash post.